In our previous video, we took a look at graphing sine and cosine and looked at the wiggle that came out of those two graphs and how we could transform it. But we haven't talked about the other four trig ratios. And that's the question we're going to answer today is how do we graph other trig functions? And we're going to start with the reciprocals of sine and cosine, the cosecant of x and the secant of x. So first, we'll look at the cosecant of x, which we know is the reciprocal of the sine of x. And we actually know quite a bit about reciprocal functions and what they look like. And so let's graph. Let's graph a little more than two periods worth of the sine of x. So sine of x goes to 2 pi normally. So half of that's pi, half of that's pi over 2. And in the middle is 3 pi over 2. And let's also go negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, and negative 2 pi. And we know that the sine of x goes from 0 to 1. So let's label where 1 and negative 1 is. And sine starts at 0, because the sine of 0 is 0, increases to the top, to the middle, to the bottom, to the middle, going the other direction, to the bottom, to the middle, to the top, to the middle. And so if we connect the dots, what we get is this nice sine function. We're going to use this blue graph to create the reciprocal function, which is the cosecant. And if you remember from pre-calc 1, reciprocal functions, whenever we have a 0, is going to become a vertical asymptote. So the reciprocal of 0 is infinity, or a vertical asymptote. So all of these zeros I'm going to change to vertical asymptotes. And what's nice is the reciprocal of something close to 0 is close to infinity. And the reciprocal of 1 is 1. And so what we end up with is this curve that comes down and kisses the top of the sine graph, and then comes in from the bottom and kisses the bottom of the sine graph. And similarly on top, then on the bottom, and so forth. And so if I were to go through and actually erase the blue line, what's left, the green, is the graph of cosecant of x. It's a reciprocal graph of the sine function. Now we could go through a very similar process to graph the secant, which is the reciprocal of cosine. And it would much look like the same graph. We're just going to move all the vertical asymptotes over to where its reciprocal cosine hits the x-axis. But let's make these a little bit more interesting by adding the transformations to our graphs. Let's graph 2 cosecant of pi over 2 theta plus 1. Well, what we know is cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So we're going to graph the reciprocal function to sine of pi over 2 theta plus 1, which means the midline we know goes up 1 because of the plus 1. We also know the amplitude is 2 because of the 2 in front of the sine. And we know the period is 2 pi divided by whatever is in front of the theta, which is pi over 2. And I can simplify that by multiplying by 2 on top and bottom. Also, when we do that, the pi's divide out. So we're just left with 4. So the period is 4. And I can use that information to start to make my graph. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to put some of the information off the screen just so that we can see it well. And 
let's go up one, two, three, four, five, six, and we'll go down one, two, three, four. The period is four, so let's go a period of four backwards, one period forwards, and let's actually go two periods forward. And we have to split that into quarters, which is nice. That's negative one, negative two, negative three, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're going to graph the sign first. So the midline went up 1. So that blue line represents the midline. The amplitude is 2, so I know it's going to increase 2 from the midline and decrease 2 from the midline to negative 1. I also know that it's a sine graph, and sine starts at the midline. So I know we're at the midline to the top, to the middle, to the bottom to the middle, to the top, to the middle, to the bottom, to the middle. Same thing to the left, bottom, middle, top, middle. And so we end up with this nice little graph. But because we aren't actually graphing the sine, we want to graph the cosecant. Cosecant is going to be the reciprocal. Wherever we hit the midline is going to create a vertical asymptote. So wherever I see the graph hit the midline, I'm going to add a vertical asymptote to the graph. And then the reciprocal is going to come off of that. And in this way, we end up with this nice little repetitive cosecant graph. And we just have to erase the sine graph, and what's left is the cosecant graph. And so now we have the graph of 2 cosecant pi over 2 theta plus 1. Now, we haven't done any secants yet, but I told you the idea is exactly the same with the secant. So let's try a secant problem. Let's graph 1 half secant of 2 pi theta minus 2 pi minus 3. Now again, we're going to first graph the reciprocal graph. And then we'll use that to guide the actual secant graph. This is the reciprocal of 1 half of a cosine. Now, to help us out here, we know with the cosine, we're going to want to factor out the 2 pi to help us with the period and the horizontal shift, which is theta minus 1, and a minus 3 at the end. So I know the midline, because of the minus 3, is down 3. I know the amplitude, because of the 1 half in front, is 1 half. I know the period is 2 pi divided by the b, which is another 2 pi, which is nice. That reduces to 1. And this time, we also have a horizontal shift because of that minus 1 in the parentheses. It's going to move to the right one unit. So when we want to graph this one, the period is 1, so let's do 1 and 2. We'll also add a negative 1. We split it into quarters to get all of our key points, which gives us negative 1 half, negative 1 fourth, and negative 3 fourths, 1 fourth, 1 half, 3 fourths, 5 fourths, 3 halves, 7 fourths. And because we're going to do a reciprocal, we'll add a couple more lines than we need to. We'll go 1, 2, 3, and negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And first, we're going to graph that cosine. We know the midline has moved down 3. Oh, well, let's move down 3. I should probably actually then extend this graph even lower than I thought. 
negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. So the midline moved down 3. That's the midline. The amplitude is only 1 half. So it's going to only come up 1 half and down 1 half. We've covered the period already of 1. Horizontal, it's going to move right 1. So it's going to start at 1. And since it's a cosine, it should start at the top at 1. And then as we go across to our tick marks, middle, bottom, middle, top, going the other way, middle, bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom, middle, top. And we end up with this nice little cosine graph. But again, we didn't want to draw a cosine. We wanted to draw its reciprocal, the secant. In that case, everywhere where it hits the midline, we should have a vertical asymptote. And then the graph's going to curve up from the asymptote and hit the peak, down and up down and up. And so we end up with this nice secant graph. Erase the blue cosine graph, and what's left in green is the secant graph that we were trying to draw. So secant and cosecant graphs, all we have to do is draw the reciprocal graph first, and then use the midline to make the asymptotes. And then we can make our u's and upside down u's within the asymptotes. But we still have to talk about tangent and cotangent. So let's look at those next. Tangent x and cotangent x. And we're going to start with tangent x just because we use that more often. And to help us out, we're going to actually build tangent with x and y coordinates, where y is equal to the tangent of x. So if x is 0, we should know from our unit circle that our tangent is 0. When x is pi over 6, y becomes 1 over the square root of 3, because the 2's divide out if you're thinking about your unit circle. Pi over 6, it's root 3 over 2 comma 1 half. And when we divide the y-coordinate by the x-coordinate, we get 1 over the square root of 3. And if I plug that in my calculator, we'll call that 0. 0.6, which will be good enough for our graph. Pi over 4 is 1. Pi over 3, the tangent of pi over 3 becomes the square root of 3, which is approximately 1.7. Pi over 2 is interesting because pi over 2, you'll remember, is 0 comma 1. That becomes 1 divided by 0, which is undefined. When it's undefined, we end up with a vertical asymptote. If we do the negatives, you'll find you get the exact same va values as the positives. So negative pi over 6 ends up being approximately negative 0.6. Negative pi over 4 becomes approximate, no, exactly, actually, negative 1. And pi over 3 becomes approximately negative 1.7. And the negative pi over 2 is also going to be undefined. So let's make a graph of what we learned here. I'm going to label similar to how we labeled before, where we labeled every pi over 4. So we'll have a pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, pi. Let's go backwards. Negative pi over 4, negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 4, and negative pi. And on the x-axis, we'll go 1, 2, 3, and negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and see what this looks like. So we've got a point at 0, 0. 
pi over 6 is not quite pi over 4. It's close, but it's going to go up 0.6, a little more than half. At pi over 4, we should be at 1. Pi over 3 is a little bit more, should be at 1.7. And then at pi over 2, we're undefined, which means we have a vertical asymptote. Going the other way, we've got negative pi over 6, comma, negative 0.6 negative pi over 4 comma negative 1, negative pi over 3. I lost my negative sign there, but it's negative 1.7. And then at pi over 2, we end up with a vertical asymptote. And when we connect the dots and use the vertical asymptotes, we see tangent becomes this curve going between the asymptote. And actually, it turns out if we keep going, Every pi over 2, there'll be another vertical asymptote. So this graph is going to come up again and level out at pi. And then at 3 pi over 2, it comes up. Similarly, at negative pi, it's going to level off. And we end up with this is the graph of tangent of x. Since this is tangent of x, we should be able to use tangent to build its reciprocal in much the same way we did with secant and cosecant. So let's take a look at the cotangent of x and see how it compares. First, I'm going to draw a couple periods of the tangent of x. And what we found was every pi over 2 was interesting. So pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, and we'll go 5 pi over 2. That's probably enough. Negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, negative 2 pi, negative 5 pi over 2. And what we found out was with the tangent, I'm going to do the tangent in blue. With the tangent, there was a vertical asymptote at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and 5 pi over 2. Same with the negatives, negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2, and negative 5 pi over 2. Then the graph would touch in the center. So it's going to increase and bend over, increase and bend over up, increase, bend over up. Increase, bend over, up. Increase, bend over, up. Cotangent then becomes the reciprocal of this function. I'm going to do the cotangent of x in green. Hopefully, we can differentiate. And what we found with reciprocals is a 0 becomes a vertical asymptote. So all the zeros of the tangent are vertical asymptotes of the cotangent. And similarly, the opposite is true. The vertical asymptotes become a 0. And so if I add a 0 at all the vertical asymptotes, this is getting crowded. But maybe if I remove all the blue stuff, you'll see we've got much the same setup that we had before. Cotangent is just going to bend the other way. What I notice about the tangent graph and the cotangent graph is they both have a period of pi. The tangent graph, though, has asymptotes at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2 etc. And actually, it should be plus or minus on each of those. The cotangent being the reciprocal has asymptotes 
at plus or minus pi, plus or minus 2 pi, plus or minus 3 pi, etc. Another interesting thing to note is going from left to right, tangent is always increasing, while cotangent is always decreasing. So with this information in mind, let's try one graph. Let's find the period of y equals 3 cotangent of 3 pi over 2 theta and graph it. Well, the thing we know about the period from sine, cosine, cosecant, and secant is we take the original period and divide by the b out front. Well, the original period is now just pi, and we divide by 3 pi over 2. Well, we clear the fraction by multiplying by 2. And what's nice is even the pi's divide out. So here, the period is 2 thirds. The 3 out front becomes a vertical stretch. It's not really an amplitude, but it is stretched vertically of 3. So we're going to see this graph kind of get taller quicker. It's a cotangent graph. So cotangents have, have asymptotes starting at pi and then every period after that. So we actually will end up with, if I go 1, 2, and negative 1, negative 2, every 2 thirds, there should be a vertical asymptote. So there's, we're going to split these units into thirds to help us out. So at 2 thirds, there's a vertical asymptote. 2 more thirds, vertical asymptote. 2 more thirds, vertical asymptote. Go in the other direction. At 0, vertical asymptotes. 2 thirds, vertical asymptotes. 2 more thirds, vertical asymptote. 2 more thirds, vertical asymptote. It's a cotangent, so it's always decreasing. And so it's going to decrease, hitting the center each time. And we've got our graph. I've kind of missed the center a couple times. We'll just put a big dot on each one to show it's going through the center. And that becomes our cotangent graph. All right, now that we've covered how to graph all these, it is your turn to practice some of these. Practice results in experience, which results in the knowledge and the comfortable uh, feeling with working with these graphs. So please take the time to practice these. Take a look at the homework. Let me know if you have any questions.